Almost every day when uh, I open the news, some sort of international treaty is being thrown out. Um, so there's the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty that was uh, recently uh, thrown out by uh, the US government, then the Treaty on Open Skies, and now people are expecting the Trump administration to also throw out the STAR Treaty. Could you uh, go one by one, explain what these treaties are and their significance that they will have on international peace and order? Yeah, we used to have a global order. We used to have a global architecture of arms control. Unfortunately, that's unraveling. Uh, we, I would begin earlier, I'd begin in 2002 with the ABM Treaty, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty which George W. Bush got rid of so that he could expand the America's missile defense programs. That actually led to Russia as early as 2003, 2004, beginning development of nuclear weapons that could circumvent America's missile defense system. And on March 1st, 2018, in Vladimir Putin's State of the Nation address, he announced that Russia had developed five new nuclear weapons, all of which can circumvent American missile defense. So that was the beginning of this problem. Uh, but then it goes beyond that. Then in uh, 2018, the U.S. pulls out of the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal. In 2019, the U.S. pull and the and as we know, the Iran nuclear deal was extraordinarily successful. I mean, if you want a, a, a nuclear agreement that seems to work, that was the poster child for it. But Donald Trump, of course, hated it, and the people around him, his advisors, hated it, uh, and they were all very anti-Iran from the beginning. So uh, then, in 2019, the U.S. pulls out of the. Intermediate, nucle intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, the INF Treaty. That was put into effect back in, uh, in uh, uh, 1987 by Reagan and Gorbachev. In the aftermath of the failure at Reykjavik, in which we came within one word, really, of yeah. abolishing offensive nuclear weapons entirely, uh, they had the fallback and it was the INF Treaty, but they eliminated an entire category, an entire class of nuclear weapons. It was a very important treaty. Uh, and then Trump in 2019 announces that the US is withdrawing and ends that treaty, accuses the Russians of having violated it, never pre presents the evidence of that being the case. The Russians deny it. And so that treaty is put on the scrap heap also. Then this year, Trump uh, abrogated the Open Skies Treaty, which went into effect back, it was negotiated, I think, in 1992, went into effect in 2002, and that allowed greater transparency as, as all the Europeans and Russia and the U.S. could sur do surveillance flights over each other's territories to ensure them that arms control was working. Another very important treaty, not as important as the INF Treaty, or in my opinion, JCPOA or the uh, ABM Treaty, but a very important treaty. Uh, we have US and Russia had other means to, to surveil each other, but the Europeans didn't. And so this was very important to them. Uh, but uh, so that one was abrogated. The other dangerous thing is that on May 15th, there was a meeting of national security deputies in the in the United, in the White House, and they talked about beginning nuclear testing again. How insane would that be to begin nuclear testing? What could the U.S. do that would make this a more dangerous world than beginning nuclear testing? The last nuclear tests were in 1992. During the Cold War, there were approximately 2,000 atmospheric nuclear tests uh, or major nuclear tests. Uh, and created an international uproar. Well, they finally stopped doing that. In 1992, uh, they, the last U.S. nuclear test. So after 28 years, the U.S. is talking about beginning nuclear testing again. And what would that mean? That everybody would do it. But already, without even doing the nuclear testing, 
every major nuclear power, all nine of them, have begun a program of nuclear modernization, making their tire stockpiles more efficient and more deadly. This was begun by Barack Obama, who won the Nobel Peace Prize for his speech in Prague uh, calling for nuclear abolition and saying that the U.S. wouldn't be the first country to abolish nuclear weapons, we'd be the last country. And somehow, absurdly, he got the Nobel Peace Prize for that uh, while we were conducting two major wars. So, uh, but, and then Obama began a nuclear modernization program. He said it was a trillion dollars over 30 years. The official estimate is 1.2 trillion. People who know say it's at least 1.7 trillion and probably much more than that. And that's to modernize every aspect of the nuclear stockpile, but other countries are doing that too. And so we're in a very precarious situation because the only treaty of significance left on the books is the New START Treaty, which ends on in February, 2021. Vladimir Putin implored Trump to renew the New START Treaty for five more years. What is this treaty all about? This treaty limits the number of strategic nuclear weapons that each side can have to 1,550. It limits the number of launch systems. So it really puts constraints on the size of the nuclear arsenal. If that is gotten rid of, as Trump says he wants to do, uh, Trump says, oh, I, I, I don't like that because China's not a party to it. Well, China has maybe 120th the size of nuclear arsenal that the U.S. and Russia have. U.S. and Russia have about 93% of the world's nuclear weapons between us. Do we really want China to become part of that and to increase its nuclear arsenal 20-fold? Would that make the world safer? I don't think so. Uh, but that's Trump's excuse for not wanting to renew it. What is that going to mean? Back in the 1980s, as recently as the mid-1980s, the world had close to 70,000 nuclear weapons. Now we're down to 14,000, which is far too many, but we had 70,000. We had the equivalent of 1.5 million Hiroshima bombs. And Trump says, I don't fear an arms race, I welcome one. We can outdevelop and outspend everybody else. We're gonna win a nuclear arms race. So the problem is you've got a president in the United States who's got his finger on the proverbial nuclear button, who's got veto power over the ongoing existence of life on our planet, and he wants a nuclear arms race, and he says, what's the point of having nuclear weapons if we can't use them? He wants to be able to use them. So in the 2000, February 2018 nuclear posture review that tr Trump administration proclaimed, put forth, I calls for developing two new kinds of nuclear weapons, smaller nuclear weapons that would be more usable. All the war games that we do over the years show that there is almost no way to stop a nuclear war when it begins. We've got this fantasy of a limited nuclear war, that we start this and then the Russians hit back and then we call it off you know, with minimal casualties and minimal damage. It doesn't mm -hmm. work that way. They escalate out of control. And we know that the threshold for nuclear winter is so much lower than people thought in the 1980s that it would not take very much to trigger a nuclear winter that could end life on the planet, effectively end life on the planet. So if we want to kill ourselves off in the short run before we kill ourselves off with global warming and these crazy pandemics, then we can be, do it through uh, nuclear war. So it's a very, very, very dangerous situation for our planet.